Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson five here, theories of motivation. So we've now moved from memory into motivation. Uh, and we're gonna talk about two particular theories. There's instinct theory and drive reduction theory that we'll talk about today. Again, part one. Here we go. So motivation. Uh, usually psychology is concerned with what people do and how they do it. Uh, research uh, generally focuses on like the behavior and nothing else. But research on motivation and emotion is focusing on why we act that way. Um, there's a lot of speculation, there's quite a few theories, uh, but motivation is the whys of behavior. So motivation includes the various psychological and physiological, so what's going on in your brain and your body, those factors that cause us to act a certain way at a certain time. So motivation uh, is the whys of behavior. Uh, so we see Kristen studying all weekend while the rest of us hang out. And since we know that she wants to go to law school, we conclude that she's motivated by her desire to get good grades. That's the motivation, to be a lawyer. We see Miko working after classes at a job that he doesn't like, but we know that he wants to buy a car. We conclude that his motivation uh, to, is to earn money for that car. Those are the reasons why they're doing that, uh, or why we think that they're doing that. The desire to get good grades causes the behavior of studying for Kristen, the desire to get a car causes the behavior of working at a job he doesn't like for Miko. So those are the reasons that we see those behaviors. Instinct theory. So this is one theory of motivation. Um, and it's all about your instincts. So instincts are natural or inherited tendencies of an organism. Um, and these uh, tendencies are to make a specific response to certain environmental stimuli without involving any reason. So there are certain things that humans do um, by instinct. There are certain things that animals do by instinct. Like my dog always sniffs other dogs pee. I don't really know why, but like that's, that's her instinct. Um, instincts occur in almost the same way among all members of a species so like all dogs sniff other dogs pee and poo I don't get it but that's their instinct um, so instinct theory is an explanation for why certain behaviors occur uh, because of their instinct now it's not really an explanation for why those things occur because instinct um, we have questions about that as well but instinct theory says that your instincts drive you to behave a certain way so an example would be salmon swimming thousands of miles through the ocean up rivers to reach the exact spot where they were spawned. Humans have instincts. We have uh, instincts such as like to live in a clean environment. Um, we are curious. We want to learn. Uh, there's an instinct for us to uh, care for our children. Uh, there's an instinct for us to be sociable. There is safety in numbers. Uh, we have an instinct to be sympathetic as we might want that for us. So like these are, um, this is a theory about why we behave this way because of our instincts. Eventually though, psychologists realize the flaw in the instinct theory. Instincts do not explain behavior. They simply label a behavior. So kind of what I was telling you or explaining in the last slide that instincts uh, we don't really understand the reason behind them as it is. So we're just labeling these behaviors as because of instinct. But if we're talking about motivation, that doesn't really give us a why. Why do these things happen? They occur because of instinct, but that doesn't help us. So uh, we move on to drive reduction theory. And this is essentially uh, the theory that you have a drive and you uh, uh, engage in behaviors to reduce that drive. Um, so something that motivates us to do an action um, is a drive. The thing that motivates us, that starts you doing something, that leads to that need, that's a drive. Um, so if you are hungry, that is a drive. The theory here is that you will eat to reduce that drive, drive reduction theory. Um, 
A need results from a lack of something desirable or useful. So maybe you need love. Then you'll be driven to find that love. The drive reduction theory. Um, you want to reduce that need. Uh, we have both physiological and psychological needs. Food to survive is a physiological need. has to do with your body. But uh, we also need self-esteem or social approval. That's a psychological need. Something that's in your brain. Uh, so essentially in this theory we say that a need produces a drive and we want to reduce that drive. A drive is an internal condition that can change over time and orients an individual towards a specific goal or goals. If you're hungry or thirsty you'll go towards food. If you are tired you'll go towards sleep uh, and you will try to reduce that feeling. Uh, we have different drives with different goals. Hunger drives us to eat Curiosity drives us to learn things and to develop new technologies, uh, and fatigue drives us to rest. So the behaviors that we engage in, like eating, learning, and resting, those are all uh, reducing those drives for the need. So when an organism is deprived of something it needs or wants, it becomes tense and agitated, and we want to reduce that. To relieve this tension, it engages in more or less of a particular activity. Uh, maybe it engages in more hunting so that you can relieve that uh, hunger drive. Thus, biological needs drive an organism to act and the organism strives to maintain homeostasis. Biological needs drive an organism to behave in a certain way uh, and then we want to, the organism tries to maintain homeostasis, which is balance. Homeostasis is the tendency of the, pardon me, is the tendency of the body to return or to maintain a balanced state. You're always about 37 degrees. Um, you always have a pH of about seven in your blood. You always are breathing at a certain rate. Your heart rate is always within a certain range. That's homeostasis. So the biological uh, drive um, that you have to reduce these uh, needs and to maintain homeostasis is to keep balance in your body. So if a behavior reduces the drive, the organism will begin to acquire a habit. So you've acquired a habit of eating, maybe a habit of eating uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is when, um, so when you create this habit, then you'll feel this drive again and you will have the same response. Again, these are explanations for behaviors. Why does an organism eat to reduce the drive uh, of hunger? Uh, why does an organism learn to reduce the drive of curiosity? Drive reduction theory states that physiological needs drive an organism to act in either random or habitual ways. Random if they don't know what to do or habitual if they do. And this drive continues until the organism's needs are satisfied and it returns back to balance or homeostasis. So you'll continue to look for food until you uh, are satiated and then you return back to balance. Your needs have been satisfied. You have some important terms to look up and then uh, some research to do about motivating yourself. But if you do have any questions, I am always here. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.